So let me go through a little bit of the presentation and then Amy will talk a little bit about the process. But I just, first of all, wanted to welcome you both into this space and to give you a sense of this place that's in my background, which is Loyola Marymount University. And it's been in existence for 100 years. I do have to point out that the Jesuits made it to Los Angeles after the yogis. The yogis came in the 1890s. Swami Vivekananda wrote Raja Yoga while living in Pasadena. And Paramahansa Yogananda got there shortly after the Jesuits did. But the Jesuits took over from the Vincentians in 1911. And we have a threefold mission is we want people to learn, that we want the whole person to be involved in that learning. Yoga, perfect in that regard. And that we're devoted to the service of faith and the promotion of justice. Regardless of how faith is conceptualized, if it brings people to the better place, we're on board and the promotion of justice. We've heard so much these past few months about the threefold difficulty of the inequalities with access to health care with COVID. We've all watched as people exclaim, I can't breathe, and then expire unjustly. And we're also deeply involved with issues of environmental justice. And that's also one of my own specializations is religion and ecology and specific yoga and ecology. So we started this, my own background, my name is Chris Chappell and I'll have Amy introduce herself in a second, but I found yoga as a teenager. I started, studied the Bhagavad Gita when I was 17 in Buffalo, New York. I met my guru a couple of months later and traveled to be with her in, on Long Island for 12 years. She was born and raised in Calcutta and did her yoga studies in Calcutta in the 1940s and 1950s. And we had a very immersive experience of Patanjali and simultaneously I did my undergraduate degree in comparative lit and religious studies, and then my MA and PhD in theology, history of religions, with a focus on Sanskrit, and particularly a text called the Yoga Vasishta. And after teaching at Stony Brook University on a part-time basis, I came here to Los Angeles in 1985, when yoga was a little bit in eclipse because of a whole variety of culture factors. And then in the 1990s, it made a big comeback and we started a study group here at my house in uh, 1996, where people from the array of including TM, but Swami Lakshman Ju, Amichi, Swami uh, Chivalasananda, uh, Disciples of Yogananda, the Shivananda Center, all of these different walks of life people and scholars with grounding in yoga practice gathered here for five years. And we ended the week of September 11th, 2001. And I went to the university and said, we have this amazing group of talented people here locally, people who had founded yoga works, on a forest academy, historic birth of studio yoga was really from this region, as well as the Swami Vivekananda and Yogananda legacy. So they approved the start of certificates, which began in 2002, when we graduated so many hundreds of people from these certificates that the university came and said, can you do a graduate degree? And I said, yes. So as we built these degrees, and I'll explain how they're structured, we also developed affiliations with Yoga Alliance with a little bit of extra work. You can get your 500 hour rounded out and with the International Association of Yoga Therapists. And one of our affiliates, um, Larry Payne, was the co-founder of both Yoga Alliance and IAYT. 
and we do have a track for yoga therapy within the um, within the master's degree. So here are the options, or no, here's really the um, curriculum is that we require study of Sanskrit language for two or three semesters. We require the study of the history and sociology of yoga through our foundations course and through the modern yoga course and just by osmosis. We require the study of the physical aspects of yoga. We have either a one or two course sequence in the anatomy and physiology of what we call yoga and health science. We deal with asana, we deal with pranayama, we deal with the skeletal system and the muscular system. We deal also with learning about the chakra and energetic system. And our build out is most comprehensive in yoga philosophy, which includes study of Vedic texts, Upanishads, Sankhikarika, Yoga Sutra, the study of Buddhism, the study of Jainism, the study of comparative mysticism, which is grounded in both psychology and spirituality. And we have an optional specialization track specifically in yoga therapy. We have a hybrid option where if you decide you don't want to leave Ohio or you're not able to leave Ohio, or if you decide you've just fallen in love with Arizona and you're going to be grounded in, I don't know if it's high elevation or low elevation, if you have trees or if you have cigarro cactus, but if you decide you want to stay put, you can do that, except that we would require that you come for a couple of weeks to Los Angeles to imbibe some of that amazing history and visit some of these historic places and learn our campus and what's available to you through our campus, even remotely. And that we gather again for three weeks. And if you have family, you can bring them. Gather for three weeks in India for an immersive study of Jain yoga with follow-up excursions to perhaps Shanti Niketan, perhaps back to Svyas, where I first landed in Bangalore at Svyas and met Dr. Nagendra in 1989, so more than 30 years ago. And he's been with us here and I've just was with him in India back last fall. And that India moment is just a wonderful gateway. And even if you're from India, you see a new angle on India through Jainism in particular and through our many connections with the yoga world there. And then if you're continuing in the hybrid, um, you'll do one or two courses each semester, your second and third years, and it will culminate in a project. And it sounds like A, Bharatanatyam and yoga, perfect project, and B, um, trauma, veterans, recovery, perfect project. In fact, one of the veterans that came through our program is now employed full-time in Fort Bragg, still called Fort Bragg in North Carolina as a yoga therapist. So he's living the good life and his family moved and he grew up in East LA and he completely um, shifted his location with this professional credential. And if you decide to move here, you still participate in this two week intensive entry course that you get to see and be with the yoga here, as well as with our faculty and our facilities on campus for those two weeks, all as a group with both players that are face to face and those that are learning primarily online. And then um, health science and Sanskrit in the fall philosophy, Sanskrit, the Bhagavad Gita and Hatha Yoga texts in the spring, Buddhism first summer session, Jain Yoga in India second summer session in July, and then back in the fall with uh, comparative mysticism, Sanskrit Yoga Sutra, or um, Yoga and Health Science too, if you wanna do yoga therapy, and the um, modern yoga course, and then the final project. So that's the two year more intensive and some of what 
you would do is just space that out if you're doing this in the hybrid format. So, Amy is a graduate of our program, and I'm going to let Amy introduce herself, and then uh, we'll see if you have questions for both of us. Hi, good to meet you both. Thanks for making time to be here. Um, my name is Amy, and uh, my dog was barking a little bit, so I made quick mute, but she's here. Shakti is her name. Um, so I am a graduate of 2016 cohort two, and um, I can't speak highly enough about both the curriculum and the experience itself. If you have the opportunity to be in LA, but even if you don't, we've mastered the online cohort. So there's a lot of community feel. You're really moving through the curriculum with a group that can kind of be your sisters and brothers on this path. Um, and the rigor of the course itself, you're going into classical texts and interpreting the texts. Um, so it's both, I think, scholastically challenging and transformative. Um, so I have nothing but good things to say. We have a class of 23 coming in in cohort eight and we'll be welcoming cohort nine in the fall of next year. So do you have any questions? Go ahead, Jason. I was gonna let you ask. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, I can go first. So yes, my only challenge would be that I um, need to take the entire program online. Um, so um, I'm glad that there is an online version or a hybrid version. Um, could we just talk a little bit more about that? What would be the requirements in order to um, come to LA? So you said at least one or two courses a semester, I need to take it up at LA or a couple of weeks um it's just it's two weeks in two august weeks. Okay. and then meeting up in india and okay. yeah so hopefully your family can organize um, a vacation and come to la and we sort of help you find either an airbnb or a lot of people when i moved to la i didn't realize how many friends from my whole life had moved to la and i found out that my grandmother used to live here and all sorts of stuff so um we'll help that experience but and then the india so that's all that's absolutely required for your physical presence and, and how long in india sorry um, three weeks three weeks in india okay yeah and the India trip, uh, can it be in any city and any ashram or is it at a specific place that we would have to do this at? Okay, so for the three weeks of the course in Jain Yoga, we live together in Jain facilities. And we're going to be at Chodadadavari, which is in South Delhi. Uh, for a few days, and then we'll, the way we've set it up is that we're going to be a little bit in Aurangabad and visit some caves and be with um, a very senior, very talented Jain yoga teacher. And then we'll be in a retreat in the hills of Pune in Maharashtra. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. And we'll also have a, at least probably an overnight dormitory style in the Yoga Institute, which is the oldest modern yoga facility in the world. It was actually founded in Harriman, New York in 1920, but uh, Dr. Yogendra located it back into his native Mumbai. And it's in the Santa Cruz neighborhood of Mumbai. And we just have this wonderful network um, and just a really loving relationship with that particular organization. Then when the three weeks are up, you're welcome to go either to meet us there early, having been somewhere else, or to travel wherever you would want to go if, if your family life allows for that. Wonderful. 
this is beautiful and i'm embarrassed to say that i haven't visited any of these places uh, though i am from india so looking forward to that really <laughs> excellent excellent And I'm wondering, Amy, if you could un explain a little bit, because it sounds like both of them have an interest in yoga therapy, what yeah. those options look like. Sure. So the low residency options, uh, you will be able to complete a yoga therapy concentration, as we're calling it. So you would essentially uh, replace two philosophy-based courses. Um, in a nutshell with two yoga therapy courses. And that way you'd be able to integrate it into the three-year program. Um, we also have the option if you decide you really wanna take all the classes and you don't wanna drop them, um, then you can complete the master's in its entirety and then begin what's called a postgraduate yoga therapy certificate. Same coursework, you're just completing it after the fact as an additional uh, nine months, and that includes practicum, mentored practicum as well. Um, so since you are not LA based, you would find practicum hours in your locality and you would work with Dr. Dr. Fazio to arrange that and get that approved. Um, so it does not have to be LA based, but still very possible. Yeah. And the IOIT, I would need to check with Lori. I know right now there's a remote option due to COVID, but normally uh, the IUIT accreditation requires in-person attendance. So we'd have to explore that further. Um, but as Dr. Chappell mentioned, we have had graduates of the master's program who went on and got full-time salaried clinical positions without the IUIT. So it's up to each individual to determine their path. In that. Um, if I may just ask um, the process of, so. Uh, the yoga therapy track in order to get a certification because I know certification is not everything but in America you sort of need that here yep. and these are the two organizations yeah. that provide it um, so in your program once we take the yoga therapy track and finish the two courses which will also have the practicum uh, uh, involved in it what would be the next steps in order to get certified uh, is it part of the program itself or is it something that we do on our own um just an idea about that. Yeah, so the current system is to take a certificate program in the Center of Religion and Spirituality that is a Western clinical model, um, whereas we're exploring Western anatomy and ph physiology, but we're also looking at Eastern modalities. So IEYT does not count the same as Yoga Alliance does not count. They told me meditation hours don't count in trainings. Um, so they do not accept the Eastern modality as counting toward that accreditation. So in order to get those extra letters, you would work with CRS, the Center for Religion and Spirituality, to do a yoga therapy certificate that would give you the additional hours that IAYT requires. They meet one weekend a month for a year. That is in Los Angeles. However, we are hoping uh, given this extraordinary circumstance of COVID, that uh, given that we are currently remote, that they will continue the remote opportunity for accreditation. But pre-COVID, it was in-person only. So we're working with IAYT to determine that aspect. But you could always, we've had crazier things happen where people fly out for a weekend or do what they need to do to complete it. Um, but that aspect is in person, um, as far as I know online right now so who knows <laughs> yeah and la is vaguely drivable from arizona i mean it's definitely drivable from arizona and then um Completely. gosh it's so funny i haven't been thinking about airlines but i know there's direct flights from cleveland to la so i know i know <laughs> any other questions i'm kind of the I mean, it's great to have Dr. Chapel here. It's actually a treat, um, but feel free to stay in touch with me. I'm your question person. So I'll put my name in the chat in my email and you can feel free. Um, we are not yet, but will soon be reviewing applications for fall of next year. 
Um, and I'm very commonly on the phone or on Zoom with prospective students, just talking through your individual um, path and, and will this work? Will that work? How do we do that? So let me know as questions arise and we can figure that out together.